Thanks, Exploit. Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is a day, which means that there's a new Infinity Decay tutorial, which is kind of what I want. I want it to be daily. We'll find out how well that works, but uh, today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. Which is me trying to recreate a thing that AU5 did in his remix of an effective mushroom song. It sounds like this. And I don't remember who requested this because I closed the window, and so I can't see. Whoops. Um, sorry about that, bro, but, uh, yeah, this was a pretty fun sound. If you would like to make a request, a sound design recreation request in these Infinity Decay tutorials, what you do is you comment your request on the latest Infinity Decay video, which right now is Infinity Decay number two. So any comment made on the announcement video or Infinity Decay number one will not be considered. And I know that sounds like kind of a dick move, but here's the thing. I have tried a lot of systems in the past about how to, how to make this sort of thing work out the best. Well, the best, and this is ultimately the one that is the simplest for me to to do. It's not necessarily the simplest for you to do, and I know that, and I'm sorry, but I'm the one making the videos, and so I'm going to make this work for me. Um, also, make sure that when you make a request, you use a link. Link me somewhere to where the song exists, and then a timestamp. Like, just tell me when the sound happens. I'll try to describe the sound. I mean, if you're going to link me to a time where there's like eight sounds happening, then maybe describe the sound a little bit, but like, time it. Tell me when it happens so that I know where to look. Um, that's, how you, that's how you do the request. That's how the rules are working, and that's how this is going to go. That's pretty much it. And like, I know there's other ways I could be doing this. I get it, but trust me, ultimately, this is the simplest, easiest, less terrible solution. Not the best, obviously, but it'll work. So let's talk about the sound. Actually, so like even just by looking at like the spectral thing inside Harmer and then looking at the spectral thing inside Edison of the sound that I'm trying to recreate, you can kind of see similarities here. And I when I, I I actually am pretty sure that this sound was made with Harmer because it sounds an awful lot like stuff that I've done with Harmer, and um. I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty jazzed if that was the case. It is also totally possible that this wasn't made with Harmer. I've been wrong about that in the past, and other things can do this. Um, given that this is A5, he's done stuff with Massive in the past that sounds really close to stuff I've done with Harmer. But um, this particular one has a lot of things that are just a lot easier to do with Harmer. And that's why I chose to do it with Harmer. And also why I chose to do it at all, because I was like, ha, I know how to do that. And I felt good about, my, about myself. But... Uh, the way this is working is that we're utilizing the phaser with the harmonic mode with a whole bunch of changes in the prism and also the harmonic uh, unison, which I did the opposite of. This is the prism, derp, and here's harmonic unison pitch, of which I have two voices. And I'm using the harmonizer to get the higher harmonics in there, although I suspect that that may have been an entirely separate layer that was put in there um, independently of the growly part, which I initially tried to do with a separate, like, a separate like layer in the AB kind of thing. But, like, I'm lazy, and I didn't, wanna, I didn't really feel like putting in the effort necessary to really, really nail the sound. Uh, which is going to be true for most of my Fandy K tutorials, just so you know. Like, there's really only so much effort I'm going to put into this sort of thing. And really, ultimately, all I want to get out of this is, like, the core concept. So that you guys, if you want to put in the work into it, you totally can. Because oftentimes, it's not so much the ethic that you guys are missing. It's just the knowledge of the core concept, which is why I exist. Whole reason I exist. Um... That's right. My parents had me because they wanted to make sure that you knew how to do sound design. Anyway, uh, let's talk about how this thing works. I'm going to sort of go over this using an, an independent harmer because I don't want to mess with the one I made. Come on. Give it. Jeez. Give it. Drop it. Yeah. So the phaser in harmer does what everything in harmer does, uh, of which there's a, like, rather it does one of the three things that everything in harmer does, which is that it changes either volume, phase, or pitch. In the case of the phaser, it changes volume. And the way that this works, like if you imagine every individual harmonic as its own separate universe that receives particular instructions over time to do whatever it is you tell it to do. It could be to change pitch. It could be to change volume. As you tray along, you say, okay, now here's some information, information on this one. It's turning and it's coming back. And now, oh, this one's getting turned off. Now it's turned back on again. Then when it's played in concert with everything else, it seems an awful lot like it's doing real things. Like what a phaser does and what a filter does, that kind of thing. Or what unison does, for that matter. This is how Harmer works, and it's part of the reason why it's so freaking sweet, because that whole thing means that we essentially have molecular control over everything that we do, even in the most basic kinds of sounds, and it turned them into something far more complex and far more interesting than most of the time that other things can even dream to do. Um, in the case of this sound, we're utiliz utilizing the phaser as the main source of modulation. Now, there's three different modes in the phaser. The one that we're concerned about is a harmonic mode. 
which on the face, it doesn't really seem like it's doing anything different from what Octave or Hertz do. Uh, octave and Hertz, of course, being distribution according to linear versus the notational values, so that octaves are treated with even even spacing, or, or Hertz values are treated with even spacing, which is just a different way of approaching either thing. <coughs> and now I'm going to cough. <coughs> All right, good times. Um, the cool thing about the harmonic mode, though, is that specifically where it determines the turnoff volume for particular harmonics is determined by a change in pitch relative to that individual harmonic. So, for example, if I'm in our Hertz mode and I screw around with a prism, you see that the where the phaser is doesn't give a damn about what the phaser about what the prism is doing. But in harmonic mode, it cares a lot, and will affect pretty dramatically where the uh, phaser does what it does. It's strangely what this kind of looks like is that this would look like the regular phaser if we sort of accounted for the like pitch. So like according to like just the, the an individual harmonic based on volume, it still thinks it's doing this based on like a regular mode. And it's a little bit interesting. However, we're gonna use this to kind of get ourselves that sort of growly move out of it. Cause like, the regular phaser doesn't growl very much, but we start to alter like when in time because you, you, you have to look at this in the vertical slice and see like here like these are the, like these are getting cut in a certain ways and like really that's what formants are is that just like they're filtering and moving in specific certain ways. Ha having seen that, like I mentioned before, if we go back in here, we can see quite clearly how that's happening, how that's going on in there. Like you can see the squiggles going on, but now which it, it, at first it might not appear as if this was even a rhythmic sound. Like if just by looking at it, because it does kind of look like because of all the other sounds in here, like cymbals and snares and stuff and kicks and that kind of stuff. That's it sort of convolutes the true image of what it looks like. But the second we hear it, we get oh, yeah, and that works out. So what happens here is that when like when the prism is doing what it's doing, it's changing the pitch and it causes these changes over here. But what the prism does is that it just moves the pitch of harmonic according to what you're doing. So if I do something like this, for example. And then had the phaser on. This graph is telling me to move these harmonics. And of course, you can have the move positive or negative. So you say when you go up like in the positive range with the knob, then these are going up, and these are going down. And then when you go in the negative range with the knob, these are going down, and these are going up. So you have lots of control over how that works. Uh, so this is the most direct way of doing that. And then when you have the harmonic mode, you know, it's doing what it's doing. Um, the other way that, that, that I am using two different ways of doing this, the other way, the other way that you can do it is to use Unison, because Unison basically does the same thing. In a regular Unison, in a normal in a normal world, you are cloning essentially the whole output of the synth, and then you're changing uh, each individual's voices, panning, pitch, and phase. Those are the three most common uh, sort of controls. And uh, in Harmer, that's still the truth. That it's making copies of the things. That's what it's doing. However. When you are pitching a regular, like a, a regular saw wave up, it's actually, I guess that's not really relevant. So, never mind about that. But the point being is that we are making those clones, and in the harmonic user pitch window, we can determine a different unison profile per harmonic. So, instead of everything moving up uniformly, some things move up or down differently. And that also gets reflected in the phaser. The beautiful thing about this, about using Unison for this purpose, is that regular Unison creates phase cancellation just regularly anyway. But the second we screw with like the profile like this, that the phase cancellation starts to get screwed with too, and we get much more unique sounds out of it. And then when in conjunction with the harmonic mode of the phaser, we get a lot of interesting motion. So in the in the one that I, I made here, I am combining the harmonic use and pitch change and the prism change, which is just me digging around, by the way. I wasn't trying super hard to do something specific. Um, Really, except for this guy, which is that, like I'm just kind of putting it into format range for this particular kind of growl, so that like these these guys are going to interact in a specific way there, and like you can kind of like you turn on the slide mode, you can sort of see how it how it affects it, and of course it'll it'll be affected fast like faster if you have more pitch change. And then as a result of that kind of face cancellation, we get the squelchiness, which just happens as a result of that. Um, and I'm distorting it to kind of accentuate it a bit more and compressing it, and it sounds pretty sweet. So the other part of it is what the harmonizer is doing. 
So like I said, um, about sort of looking at this kind of thing, you can get that rhythmic feel out of it too. And like, I actually think this is a layer. I'm pretty sure it's a layer. It could not, it could be not a layer. Like they could do it. They could have done it the way that I did it and just did it, you know, tighter. But, um, my initial sort of thought was to make it as like a B part to like make bell harmonics and then just to fade it in with a phaser, which you can totally do. And uh, hardware is actually particularly easy at that. I can just use the one I already have. I have more than one. Look at that. Where you just play a high note. Use the prism, even on its default stat. Maybe you use square mode. And you've got bell harmonics. You know, reverb and stuff. Like, I did a whole video on how to synth about how to make bells, and it was using harmony to do this kind of thing. Like, you can do that with FM8, you can do that with Citrus as well, because if you FM a sine wave or, like, any other tone by another tone that's just not the right, that's just the wrong pitch, you're going to get that kind of behavior out of it. So I was just going to do that and then put a phaser on it. You can kind of see how, like, certain harmonics fade in before others, and that's indicative of phaser behavior. It kind of looks like it's going on here as well. Actually, now that I think about it, that might still be the same oscillator but have the phaser, the harmonizer before the phaser, which I'm already doing. No, I guess that wouldn't work. Well, whatever, and there's, there's a whole, there's, a, there's many options, which is really why I like plugins like Harmer because you have the option to do kind of whatever the hell you want, many, many ways. Um, but what I'm sort of like the, the, the sort of the cheap version of this, assuming of course that it was a layer that it was just a separate thing, it's like being layered on top of there. I mean, there's also plenty of like audio editing going on, like, like that, that right there, that's, I mean, Harmer's not doing that by itself. I mean, it could have, like I said, many ways, but the simpler solution would have been to do it with like something like Gross Beat. But since uh, AU5 uses Logic, I'm going to assume that that was audio editing or maybe some effect in Logic that does that that I don't know about because I don't use Logic. Oh, have I done disclaiming stuff yet? Jeez. Um, but the way this works is that it's just on, and I'm, and you just volume, you just automate it up like this if you want it to be on. You could do it automatically by putting like an LFO in here or something like that. That, that can work totally fine. Um, the way the harmonizer works is that it copies up harmonics that are sort of in a, in a range, and then paste it above it to sort of form the illusion of harmony. And when you have a full stack, like a saw wave, because it's not actually playing new harmonics. It's it's not. It'll play new harmonics if we have like not a lot of activity we put the harmonizer after something like a filter it'll sort of pace them up there but like this not these still aren't even really new harmonics because those harmonics are there they're just not on they're always on they're always there they're always present but they're not like whether or not they're, we, we hear them is determined by whether or not they have the volume data for the moment um but it's not like unison where it's putting it's cloning whole harmers and playing this whole sets of voices it's still just the one voice um where this is important is where the how the matrix works well, right, right, okay. So, like, we have the range set by the width, like, with the amount all the way up. We have it there, but the width essentially determines how far up it gets pasted. Um, the matrix is a lot of fun. However, I really, I, I, like, I've read the manual and I still don't get, like, what the hell offset, step, shift, and gap mean. But it's pretty clear when you mess around with it. That it's just, it's just there to move where the harmonizer, harmonizer works. Note that it's actually still in the harmonic series. It's still playing harmonics that are in the series, but um, high enough notes are far enough away from a regular pitch that it could still sound metallic. There's also a randomize option, which like is a fine thing to do, honestly. So that's essentially what I did here, is I just kind of found one that worked, that sounded good. And then that's it's just there now. Um, this is a side that's heavily dependent on sort of the rhythm of the phaser. And something that's not entirely obvious is that the offset will determine where it begins. Because there is a certain, like, it always runs. It's not like it's not like a, an LFO in, in, in Serum where you can tell it to restart every time you trigger it. It runs all the time. So if you want it to sort of set up right, you have to play it on time. And sometimes it won't begin in the phase that you want. And that's what the offset is for. Sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you got to have the speed go in some other direction. But like it's, you just have to sort of pay attention to what these settings are doing, which are usually pretty straightforward. You know, on, 
the width of individual ranges, where it begins, and how fast it goes. And there's also keyboard tracking, which can have some fun applications as well. But that's this sound. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, and favorite, and comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to make a request, please do so with a comment in the description of the latest Infinity K tutorial, which, as of right now, August 30th, is this particular video. But when number three comes out, make your request there. Any requests made anywhere else, any requests made without a link and without a time, will be ignored. Yeah, that's how this works. This preset will be down available to download in the description of this video. Yay! Y'all have a nice day.